manufacturers worldwide are going to be under greater political and competitive pressure to increase domestic production, grow employment in our home countries and reduce or eliminate dependence on outside sources. So can anyone tell me um, the great toilet paper disaster of 2020? Does Canada manufacture toilet paper? Show a, a show of hands if you think um, Canada manufactures toilet paper. Robin says yes. Eric says yes. Emma says yes. Good. It does. We have a fabulous um, uh, toilet paper company out in Ontario, actually. And yet still, we ran out. Mm. Now think about those chips that we use in the cars. Did you know that if you went to a um, car dealership right now and asked for a 2022 brand new vehicle, they would not be able to supply it. And they can't supply it because there's a shortage of the chips that go in those vehicles. And it is not expected to recover until about this time next year. Does anyone know where those chips are made? Robin might. You can type your answer in chat if you're more comfortable or you're, you're also able to, to actually tell us. Either okay, way is so fine. Eric said in Asia. Absolutely. The and then uh, Robin said in Japan in the chat as well. Yeah. So you're right, it is in Asia. And the reason that there's a shortage is because COVID has been so dynamic over there that they just can't keep up with production. And so production actually ground to a halt and now we're behind. That is a supply chain issue. You may also have noticed over the last few months that there's a different sort of set of soda pops available to us. My favorite soda pop is Sprite Zero. I know, aspartame, all of those lovely things. <laughs> there has not been any Sprite Zero available since COVID started because it's not a high moving item. Coca-Cola is a high moving item. If there's a shortage of aluminum, I'm not gonna use it to produce Sprite Zero. I'm gonna use it so I can make the thing that sells the most. That's supply chain, okay? So I wanted to talk about these things because they're on the forefront of the media. They're really big and we've all come across them in the last few months. And COVID has really brought up some really interesting pieces that we've never thought about before. We don't make these products here. We don't have the labor. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the employment, but we're going to have to if we're going to survive. And that's why supply chain management is an amazing option right now. So let me take a look at this slide with you. So think about a chain, an actual chain link. If one of those links is broken, what's going to happen? I'm gonna leave you with that thought and the talented Andre is gonna ask you a couple of questions. Uh, sounds Andre. good. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, first of all, what I wanted to do was um, a little bit of an icebreaker here. So um, you can type in the chat or you can say it verbally, whatever you're more comfortable with. And I want to know one thing that any one of you have done that was very helpful to somebody in the last recent couple of weeks or in the last couple of months. Just one thing that you did that was very helpful. So Anybody want to volunteer to speak? You can go ahead and start. But I just want to know one thing that you did that was helpful. Well, I'll start while, that, while everyone else is thinking. And what I've done recently that was helpful, let's see. I actually just finished a phone call with another student advisor where I was able to use my experience as a healthcare worker to help answer some questions that a prospective student coming into healthcare had about our healthcare programs. So I'm hoping that that helped not only our advisor, but also our student. So let's see, Robin, do you have something that you've done recently? Got something in chat. Um, Eric mowed the lawn for some elderly neighbors. That's amazing, Eric. Kudos to amazing. you for doing such an amazing thing to help another person out. That's really incredible, well done. Absolutely, I'll go next. I um. 
I do music and I love to play music, but also sing. And I have a bunch of uh, musicians that I work with. And one of the musicians last week had a very, very terrible time with learning a song and called me. And we stayed up till two in the morning to learn and perfect the song. And when he was finished and when he sang the song, he sounded like an angel. And that was very, very satisfying to me, knowing that we took the time to break the song down, learn the parts. Then he added his own personality that felt very good to help that individual out there. So that was my, my thing that I did a little help for. So um, Emma, do you have something? I think they're all shy. We don't got shy people here. I know we don't. You can either speak or you can talk, type it. Here, Robin has one. Robin advised the neighbor that he had a critter dig a hole that he should address. Could have been a chipmunk or a mole. Oh dear. Wow, yes, how important I, is that? <laughs> I live in, on an acreage, so I understand moles digging holes in my lawn. It's a huge problem. So I love that, Robin. Thank you. Eric, I, that was very funny too, but it's very good because I at least should be able to take care of that particular situation because that can be a very big problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Emma, Why am I Nina, does anyone else have anything they want to share with us or should we just move on? I'm okay with either one. <laughs> That's all right. I'll tell you the reason why I was asking. Um, supply chain management is all about helping. And we're talking about the chain, as Bonnie just mentioned earlier. And the chain is all these links that are all helped. They're all links to help work out a situation, work out an error. And you guys are going to be a part of systems that create that link and also help that link to stay together. So it just kind of gets your mind thinking about how have I helped all the details and the things that I've done to help somebody. I thought that that would be appropriate to kind of talk about that. So it kind of gets you in the headspace of thinking about that and how can I be a part of that chain and that help. And this is why Bonnie and myself and Willis College are doing this presentation to find out how we can help you guys on your journey to figuring out which part of supply chain management is the best for you, not only during the course, but after the course as well. Mm. Which leads me quite beautifully, thank you, Andre, into yep. our next slide, which talks about employment. So supply chain management is a, an umbrella term. It's an umbrella term under which fall a plethora of titles. We've picked some of the most common, but let me tell you that there are a lot. If you went into Indeed right now and you typed in supply chain management and logistics, you would see so many things. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But some of the um, job titles, procurement clerk, purchasing clerk, inventory clerk, purchasing agent, supply chain assistant, shippers, receivers, dispatchers, freight, so many different ones all encompassing for employment. And something that Andre and I learned yesterday while we were doing some research for this presentation is that one of the new areas for supply chain management is logistics. There is a new position that's been um, created, I guess, due to COVID called logistics analyst. And it's come in because we're trying to figure out how to make sure we never break those chains again and we don't run out of toilet paper and aluminum cans and chips for our cars. So now they're looking at logistics analysts out of the supply chain program. So I thought the next slide would be really interesting for all of you. Just about an hour ago, I typed into Indeed supply chain management and logistics, and then I typed in the name of the province. In Ontario, there were 8,000 positions. In Alberta, 1,800 positions. In wow. Manitoba, 500, and in British Columbia, 3,500. Now, these are all, all different positions within this field. What I was able to find out is that the, there was an average wage and that al almost all of these positions were full-time. It is truly believed that this field is going to be more important post-COVID than even healthcare, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So... 
this is the perfect time. We also learned yesterday, Andre, didn't we, that it's not really supply chain management. It's management of supply chain. It's the management of supply chain. Absolutely. It yeah. kind of gets you to think a little, diff little differently there. Exactly. So if you look at these numbers and you consider where you live right now and that you're thinking this might be a place to go, I think fabulous time to get started in this program. I will also tell you, obviously, I did not look at all 15,000 positions available right now. But I did pick different ones in different provinces, and they were all looking for college diploma or university degrees. So something else for us definitely to think about. So, Andre, I want you to talk about the changing client in the management of supply chain. Tell me a little bit about what, what, we're, what we're talking about. Uh, absolutely. Um, as some of you may know or may not know, the retail space and how you got products and how you get things has completely changed over the last 10 years, five years, even two years, even 30 years ago. Um, if some of you were, you know, old enough to remember, you had to physically use a pencil and write things down on a little bit of a card and then give it to somebody. And um, then that person took that piece of paper, then put it into a computer. There were so many steps that they know they've done it. But Bonnie, the other day I was on, I wanted to get um, some items and I just went on to Amazon and you know what I did? I clicked two buttons. I clicked the item and then I click purchase and then the item came to my door the next day. It's, That's it's how I'm awesome. doing things now, you know? So it sounds simple and it sounds easy, but what is Amazon really doing? They've completely done what they call e-commerce and that is a huge, huge market for supply chain management or the management of supply chain um, that has become now one of the biggest, biggest, biggest um, things to do in the market. So 80% of what companies are doing now is all online. So how do we purchase items now? I just spoke about that. I went to my phone. We're all, we can all probably contest to that. Right from our cell phone, that little device, we click two buttons, maybe three if the most, and the item comes to my house. Whenever I order Uber Eats and I get my reorder, I'm clicking one button. And they remembered my order exactly how I liked it, exactly the way I wanted it. And the, sometimes even the same delivery guy shows up, Bunny. <laughs> yeah, which is I, really. I just ordered a pair of boots just before the webinar, actually, because there was a sale popped up on my phone to tell me that my favorite store had a, a sale on and there were some winter boots I really wanted. Like, who would have done that not that long ago? We would have gone to the store, looked around, tried on a million pairs of boots, probably left, thought about it, gone back, tried on another pair. All I did, three buttons, and I will be picking up my boots tomorrow. So I kind of like that. Andre, <laughs> tell me what blockchain is. I could definitely do that. So blockchain is just the communication that when your computer and the computer of whoever you're dealing with, with the retailer, are able to talk to each other. The language that they speak is very important for a supply chain management personnel to know and understand. Um, and it's one of the things that is the wave of not only now, but the future. And understanding that lingo and that jargon is going to have you position yourself a lot better. So one of the things that our course will do is to teach you how to understand this language here. So the next one is what is cold body? So when I saw that word too, I was like, what is cold body? What is going on your body? Well, think about this. Everything that we do now is, is really automated. So co-bonding is just the practice of using machinery and AI, so to speak, to talk and help you out with your supply chain management. So how does a computer do that? What are the programming aspects that are needed? Um, how do they speak back and forth with each other? How do they make sure that things are on time? We need personnel to manage that. And we need individuals to be able to understand that specific type of language. So that's uh, what co-botting is. Now, reverse supply, we learned this one too, right, Bunny? Um, we learned it just yesterday. <laughs> just yesterday. And one of the headaches of any company is when you return something. If you guys can just show me by hands, if you have bought something from a company and ordered it and then returned it, put your hand up if you've done that. If you've purchased something and you returned it. 
Okay, Robin Open has MR. MR has MR. If you purchase something online or purchase something somewhere and you brought it back, I tell you, it's one of the nightmares of a supply chain management company. And when this happens, there's a few things that can happen. One, they got to get rid of the product because they can't resell it. So for example, if you order a toilet online from Walmart, Home Depot, when that toilet comes back, there's no way for them to repackage that toilet and then send it out to a new customer. Because can you imagine getting a, a saying a new toilet coming to you and that toilet, you know, is not looking brand new and has some sort of marks in it that are not supposed to be there. Um, it could be a nightmare. So learning the language and understanding what is needed in order to minimize those errors and minimize that situation or coming up with brand new ways of how to deal with it when it happens is one of the things and some of the things that you're going to learn while you do this course with us. So that way you can provide those solutions to companies when you're in your interviews and when you do have your jobs and looking like a hero. Um, one of the things that we learned as well is, and, and I agree that supply chain management personnel are going to be looked at as the superheroes very soon. Um, behind the scenes, everybody knows the work that they do, but um, it's going to come to the forefront, especially because of e-commerce here. Now, all of these things are very necessary in terms of management of supply. And the reason why we say management of supply is because it doesn't matter what position you do from the lowest position to the highest position, the CEO has to manage what is happening. The person that is on the line doing the smallest position has to manage what happens. So understanding that language of blockchain, understanding what co-botting means, when reverse supply is happening and understanding that language is gonna have you guys in a way better position. And we look forward to making sure that you understand that piece. Thank you, Andre. No the next thing I'm gonna talk about a little bit with all of you, this is actually an assignment from our supply chain management program. And it's called the water bottle. So think about the water that, that we drink out of plastic bottles every single day. How do companies get water in bottles to consumers. So think about the path that it takes. First, we have to source the plastic to make the bottle and the cap. We have to source the water. We have to get the labor, the manufacturing plant, the labeling and marketing. And then there's the whole distribution piece. More packaging, where we're wrapping up all of those bottles into cases. More distributing. There's gas and diesel involved. There's more labor, more storage. Then there's breakage delivery, sales, and reverse supply. And the list goes on. Every single facet of this is part of the management of supply chain. What you would do with this assignment is we would ask you to start from sourcing the plastic and come all the way down to delivering your bottle of water to the store and figure out why and how this whole process comes together and where things can go wrong and how we would fix it so they don't and where we can make things better, where there's opportunities to improve the processes. That is management of supply chain. Super cool, isn't it? Absolutely. Robin actually added in the comments, um, Bonnie, that it starts and with a concept and needs to be designed. And you're absolutely right, Robin. It starts with somebody thinking about, hmm, what do I want to do? I want the bottle to look like this. They draw it out and then all the way to that design portion and then all the way to getting it to us. So there's a bunch of steps that are involved. So you got the right idea, Robin. Good comment. Nice job. Thank you. All right. So let's actually talk about the program here at Willis College. We now know why supply chain is important. Let's talk about what. What are you going to learn while you're with us here at Willis College taking the supply chain management program? And I'm going to give this one all to Andre because this is his baby. He's all passionate about this. Let's go, Andre. Tell me why. <laughs> Tell me what. I, I, I am passionate about this because I just mentioned earlier that not only are you guys going to learn the language, but we have an amazing instructor that's going to show you guys, because of his 30 plus years of experience, is going to show you guys how all of this works. But let's start with the first one, inventory control and warehousing. Everybody knows that in order to get product to a consumer, you have to house that product in a certain specific way. You have to make sure that the temperature is a certain way on certain products. 
and you have to have a warehouse that's willing to store it and make sure that it's in a position that it's good. So learning the ins and outs of what that's about and how to do that is one of the things you're going to learn. Um, contract management and negotiations. Everybody has done this before. You've gone into a store and you said, okay, I see the price is set $60. I want it to be $50. How do you negotiate that? What do you do going back and forth? How do you do that? But in the supply and chain management world, the same thing happens because you're going to be dealing with so many suppliers. What is the best price? What is the best price for the company? How can we negotiate that? And we'll teach you how to do all of that during this course. Now, supply chain security. So not only do you have to house the stuff, you got to secure it. What does that look like? What kind of security services are you using? Are you doing a 24-hour security service? Are you hiring extra, extra personnel? If you're doing that, what's the cost of that? How does that change the bottom line of the product and getting the product to the clients and so forth? So you're going to learn a little bit of how, uh, not a little bit, a lot actually of how that works. So that way you can understand that portion. Customs administration and procedures. Barney, you ever order something and it comes from international? And <laughs> so I have to pay for it to cross customs. I was just about to say that. So there's different charges. So imagine ordering a product from England in, in pounds, and that's pretty much double the cost of what it costs in Canada. So that shipping and handling costs, you're going to be paying different prices. Understanding that there are different custom um, administration things that need to be done. Um, what do different countries do? Um, what are the most you know common procedures and practices that are currently happening now? Where are the companies leaning towards more? That and more is going to be talked about in that aspect. So you have a good understanding. So you could be in front of an employer and they're asking you a question. What is your experience with international customs? And you can speak to, here's how it works in Europe. Here's how it works in Africa. Here's how it works across the world. And understanding those mechanisms will have you looking like a hero to your employer. So we'll go over that. Transportation, logistics, and management. So 30 years ago, probably the only way to get products was either through boat or a truck. Okay, now, wait, 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 wait. 30 years <laughs> ago, you might have been a baby, but I wasn't. And there was a couple of other ways. Yeah, there's a couple of other ways, but they weren't as, as prevalent as getting it on a truck or getting it from a boat because that was the system that they used that they relied on. Using a plane and all that is good. But Bonnie, do you know in Dubai right now that if I order something from Amazon, do you know those things that fly above the ground that come to you? They're called a drone yeah they can they can bring your item by a drone within 30 minutes to you whenever you've ordered something that you want right away you pay a little extra for it but drones are now in place they've got cars that can self-drive down there in certain parts of the country and in parts of the world so there's different mechanisms and different ways of how transportation is being used for getting products to clients and the logistics of that and how to manage that and how to make sure things are on time you guys are going to learn that in the course as well um, strategic sourcing. You have to have partnerships when you're doing supply chain management. If any of you have worked in this field, everything boils down to a relationship. And it's like the underlining keyword that everybody's got to understand when you're working with this, because having three or four delivery guys and having good relationships with them will make sure that the company is always getting their products and their services on time. So how do I understand that? How do I build that? And then what is the technology, the supply technology advancements that are happening now and for the future? And how can I prepare myself to be somebody that is an expert in that area? So we're going to teach you guys how to do that as well. Now, we've highlighted all of these courses to let you guys know. Of course, there's some other fundamental things like you're going to learn a little bit about Excel. So all those who run from Excel, <laughs> like all of us do at some point <laughs> um, when we get to, you know, learning up V tables and look up V look up and oh my gosh, you, it can go on, but you'll learn the basics of that. So that way you can understand that. Cause a lot of companies do use that. Um, and a little bit of soft skills in that area. You'll learn that, learn that as well. But more importantly, we wanted to highlight these things because these things are where the future of companies are going. And we want to prepare you guys for not only now, but where, the supply chain management field is going. 
Thank you, Andre. As you can see, our program is comprehensive and covers all of the areas you would need to work in a ton of different positions. And the reason we've done that is to make sure there's a lot of doors open for you at the end. The program does have a practicum in, in, involved. And because we have an amazing career and employment team, they will help with getting your practicum set up and helping you get employed in the area of supply chain that kind of most intrigues you because there's so many pieces. Um, and so we've really touched on everything to make sure that you understand just how versatile this program really is. So the next step for us really would be how do you get into the program? So our program does start um, in the fall online and um, to be eligible for the program, we would need you to be um, 19 years of age or one year out of high school, have your high school diploma or take a school assessment. Don't panic when you see that term. It's really not too difficult. Um, we also we asked a couple of people and our new instructor about who would make a good supply chain management employee. And they said people who are open minded, inquisitive and ask lots of questions, good at negotiation, patient and curious. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely curious and I'm. I'm patient, don't know that I'm good at negotiating because I want what I want and I just want it. So not the <laughs> best, um, but these are great skills for people in the supply chain management role. The other option, of course, is that we're going to talk very briefly about funding options for school, about using RESPs, student loans, um, going to the bank, all of those different things. And we're open to any questions about any of this. So we do have one more slide, but before we get there to close out the presentation, I really want to open up for any and all questions that you might have. Please type your question into the chat box and we will be super happy to, um, to answer them for you. You're right, Robin, method of transportation, plane versus boat, that's absolutely true. And guys, just remember, as you're typing or thinking about your question, there is no such thing as a small or in uh, or it doesn't really matter question. You're talking about um, moving towards your future. So mm. ask your question and maybe three or four other people are probably thinking the exact same thing. Um, so you might open up uh, a really good time to, you know, have things to be understood. And uh, so there's no silly question. There's no small question, please ask. We are here to help. Um, so I sort of, oh, look, there's a, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask one, but look, the one came in. There are yes. so many careers I can choose from in this course. How will I decide which one is the best for me? Eric, that's a really fabulous question. And really a big part of that is gonna be which of the courses speak to you the most as you're doing them. You may find that the courses in purchasing or procurement are the most interesting to you and the ones in logistics are the least interesting or vice versa. That will definitely help you choose the direction you wanna take your career. We're also gonna work with you with um, our career services team for resume and interview skills. And that will also help us help point you in the right direction. That's a really fabulous question. Thank you, Eric. Bonnie, I just want well, to really quickly add to, mm -hmm. to that, just quickly. Um, so Eric, you're also going to be doing what they call a practicum. So you're going to get to choose and have an option of working with a company where you can test out some of the things that you're feeling that you like. So that way you'll get some real hands-on experience for that as well. So not to worry, we will guide you through that. But doing the practicum can really open up your mind to different things as well. That's awesome, Andre. Thank you. Robin, I love your question. Will we all work at the same pace? So here's how online works for Willis College. Um, you have two nights a week where we want you to log in live to the lecture with your instructor and your classmates. We're going to keep you on target so that you all finish the program at the same time and that you're all heading out into practicum and into employment. So we're a little bit different online. We're not just giving you all the books and all the information and sort of letting you get on with it. We really want to make sure that we're providing you with instructor led lectures. Um, we're giving you um, really good recorded lectures that you can fall back on through the week. 
all of your exams will be on Sundays and we're following uh, a schedule to ensure that you're finished in the 39 weeks of the program. Um, so it really does mean that you're all working together. There's lots of group work. There's lots of teamwork. There's lots of use of breakout rooms in the Zoom setting online that you're really well prepared from a communication standpoint as well as anything else. Um, is the Willis College Diploma equivalent to Ontario College Diploma? So the Willis College Online Diploma is recognized across Canada in every province. We do have students across the board. So the Willis College Diploma is recognized everywhere, Mina, including Ontario. MR says, I don't have a lot of experience in this field, but I have experience in customer service and administration. That is a fabulous start into this Amazing. career. Amazing. Really great. All companies want us to be good at customer service and have administration skills everything else we can build on from there. This would be amazing for you to be able to move into business and into a whole new direction, MR. Really fabulous question. Thank you so much. Mina, you're very welcome. Absolutely. Any more questions for us? Super happy to answer them. These are very good questions, by the way. MR, you're welcome. The schedule for online is really very cool with the two evening classes that you attend. MR, are you, if you're in Ontario, the evening classes start at eight o'clock at night. And we've done that specific to making sure you're home from work, you've had supper, children are in bed, you're able to concentrate. You've got a live lecture with your instructor. Instructor is going to review exams and assignments for you. There's also three recorded lectures that you can optionally attend on Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. And then we make the schedule so that all exams are on Sunday. So there's no surprises. So it's nice and easy to follow. We recognize that everyone is working full time. Um, is there any credits that can be rewarded for experience or other courses taken? Absolutely, Robin. If you're able to provide a transcript from other courses taken, we would look to see if there was prior learning credits we could provide. Um, as for experience, we don't do credits based on experience, but it would definitely give you an advantage in the class. But if you have transcripts from any other courses, we absolutely can provide we call them prior learning credits. Um, really happy to do that for you. Textbooks, do we provide or will we have to buy our own? We provide them for you, Mina. Everything you need to be successful will be provided. All of our textbooks are provided as eBooks. So you get them um, with every course that starts, you get whichever book you need. The eBooks are really cool. They're designed so that you can download them and actually have them read to you. So if you travel to work on the bus, you can have your textbook reading to you while you're smiling at all the other people on the bus. Amazing. If you're making dinner, you can have the textbook read the chapter that you're supposed to be ready for the next day. You can also highlight and take notes in the textbook. They're really cool. Everything is provided. Yeah. And you could print off some of the pages that you may need as well, because some people like to physically do that. You do have the option of being able to do that for some of them as well. So that's thank you, Andre. Yeah. Right. Really great questions, you guys. Does Willis provide employment help when I finish? You betcha we do. <laughs> that is our goal. Yeah, so absolutely. on the next slide, we're going to share a really fun little piece of information with you about our goal for employment. But yes, of course, we absolutely, we want you all to be employed in the field and we're going to help you find the work. Does your school help with finding employment? Yes, Emma, we do. We have an entire team of people whose job it is to try and make sure that all of our students get work in the field that they took their diploma in. So just finding work, not enough for us. It has to be related to the diploma that you took in school. As a private college, we are accountable to the government for a 70 percent um, employment, employment rate for rate. all students. Ours, however, is better than that. We're going to show you in a minute. We have a whole team that take care of that. We also do resumes, interview skills. Um, we talk about networking and, and how to make connections, all of those types of things. What is the course load like? I work full time. So we do one course at a time, MR. So we'll do, let's say we're going to do... Um, what was one of those sourcing, a sourcing course that's two weeks. 
We'll concentrate just on sourcing for two weeks. That's what we do. When that one's over, we move to the next one. So you're only ever concentrating on one thing at a time. If How amazing is that? You have to do everything all at the same time. Too hard. Much too hard. And you don't get good at it. And we want you to be good at it. Okay. So definitely something you can handle with full-time work and family. Um, in the online school right now, we have over 200 students. And all of them are managing really, really well to negotiate what we call modular learning, which is one course at a time, really finishing that course, getting good at that course and moving on to the next one. I hope that really helped. All right, I love all these questions. The next class is October 25th, oh, MR, and we would be more than happy to help you and show you how to get started in that path. And um, before we leave tonight, we'll ask you um, to give us an email or some way for us to contact you to help you with that, okay? Um, and then the other thing is last week we had an open house for online. Um, and if you were unable to attend that open house, I would be more than happy to invite any of you to um, reach out to me and I can do a little tour of classroom and Zoom and, and kind of how we conduct our online world to make you feel better about what you're getting into. Please don't hesitate. Andre and I will give you both our email addresses at the end of the presentation. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm super excited, Robin. You're right. It does give us the opportunity to, to practice everything that you're doing in your work while you're in school. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about our closing slide. I have a friend who's interested. Can I pass along her information? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, maybe while I'm doing, uh, while I'm getting the last slide, because you're going to do the last slide, but maybe while yeah. I'm getting it, you could put yours and my email into the chat box for everybody. That would be awesome. Absolutely, I can do that. Let's do that. All right, and then we have our final slide up. Thank you, Andre. You're welcome. Andre, are you a one finger typer? No. <laughs> to be told, I type very funny. I use both hands, but it's a very funny way. And if you ever see me type, you'd be like, how in the world did you learn that? I learned that from like grade nine and I've never stopped doing it. And teachers tried to correct me and I was like, nope, this is comfortable to me. But <laughs> I, do, I do type fast, actually. <laughs> all, right. all right slide for us andre <laughs> yeah you caught me buddy yeah you're right it is funny <laughs> all right um support i think mina robin eric mr emma all of you can contest to this that it's very important for you to feel that you're supported through your journey of taking your dealing with your reality while working on your dream and at Willis, we believe in that wholeheartedly. Um, if you haven't noticed thus far, we keep coming back to saying we're here to help and, and guide you guys. Um, we're your biggest cheerleaders, aside from your family and your friends and anybody else that's going to be cheering you on. But the instructors are from the industry. The minimum experience we have is five years, and all of them can speak about the experience along with the theory. And we don't hire anybody that does not have the experience. This one speaks dear to me in my heart, the next one here, keep me safe. And what do we mean by that? Everybody at some point gets frustrated. Everybody gets overbeared with all the things that they have to do. Some of you are parents like myself. And trust me, I know that certain times you just want to throw up your hands or you want to discuss things. You want to find better solutions. We have a, an amazing program called Keep Me Safe where at 24 hours a day, seven days a week, included in your program, you can call a number and get any sort of help that you need to get through those tough times and those tough things that are outside of school. Um, it's so important to be able to feel like you have that safety net because you're going to get it from your instructor. 
You're going to get it from Bonnie, of course. She'll be there for you guys. And I've seen Bonnie do this many a times, up at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock with students, having the conversations of like, no, you can do this. We can do it. You'll have the support of me and all the advisors that you're going to be able to speak to here. Um, but more importantly, you have this number to call to get that outside professional help, which is very important. And you don't got to pay for that. We're not charging you for that. So just know that you have that support that's there. I really love that option. Um, student support services. So sometimes we even have past students that can come in and help with going through some of the information. Um, a lot of our instructors do that sometimes and depending on what program and what um, stage they're at, they can do that. So there's that to keep me safe. I just remembered all the support that you're gonna get from our career services team, which are an amazing team that is going to be there from you guys. During the halfway point, you're gonna start meeting some of them and you're gonna start getting these emails about setting up your practicum and making sure you get into a place that you know is comfortable for you. So all of that is gonna be there as well. Lifelong career service support. So what do I mean by that? Some of you are gonna get into your careers when you finish and graduate and you're gonna be there for like three, four years and you're gonna love what you're doing, but you're gonna be ready to take that next step. You could come back to us and say, you know what guys, I'm ready to take the next step. I wanna to go to management. I wanna to go to the executive side. We can help redesign your, your resume, um, go through mock interviews with you, tell you what's happening in the time of, of what's going on. Even go as far as if there's a course that we're offering at the time that can help to be put onto your resume, because you're a past student, we can actually have you join that class to get that experience. And then you can add that to your resume um, for employers, which is really, really awesome. Small class sizes, 30 people max, uh, allowing us to give you our full undivided attention and support. How many of you guys have heard in university and, and certain college courses where they got 200 students They've got 400 students, they got 500 students. I've even heard classes have like 700 plus students. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the world does anybody get any support? You know, you're left alone. We don't do that here at Willis. We condense it to 30 people max so that way you guys have the full support of the team. 87% higher rate for all programs at Willis College currently. Now, we don't say that number lightly. We say that number with our chest up high and very proud. And I'll tell you why, every student that has come through, almost nine out of 10 students are getting employment when they are finished with us. So for us, that is a benchmark that we love to tell our students because yes, it's important to get your degree, but it's even more important for you to be working in your field. And we stress both of those very, very much so, but that one of getting that employment, we stress even more. And our career services team really speaks to that. So we're very proud of that that number there. And we look forward to having you guys a part of the program so you can experience that as well. Uh, Bonnie, it looks like we had some um, questions in there or some things come up. Yeah, so there was a question about how long the program is. So 39 weeks of a four week practicum. It is a diploma program. And there's a question about total cost, which I am scrambling to find for you right now. Ruth, just give me one second. Um, that was a question I was not prepared for tonight. I deeply apologize. Um, so I'm just looking through a couple of things for you to get the correct price. We're going to give you the price with everything, including all of, all of your books so that you have an all in price. So just give me one second while we find that. No um, and then we should be really good. So the cost for the program is 13,800 and that does include all of your books and everything that you need. And if I remember correctly from getting um, ready for enrollment into the program, there's about 20 different textbooks that you'll be getting over the duration of the eight months. So um, lots of books to learn. All right. Absolutely. Awesome. Any other questions that we can help with tonight? You're very welcome. Welcome, Ruth. Ruth. <laughs> we are here for you. Excellent. I like um, everybody's hand is still up. That means they got lots of questions. Everybody's still there. raised. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. So we will end the evening. Um, I want to thank all of you for your attention today. We have given you our emails. Please don't hesitate to reach out. 
um, MR, Mina, Ruth, Emma, Mohammed, we're absolutely here to help you. Robin, um, any question, we're, you don't have to be enrolling to ask us a question. Ask us any question that, that you like. Um, email us anytime. We will absolutely, be happy, Robin. happy to answer them anytime you want. Um, Andre and I are always available. And um, as you may have noticed, we like to feed off of each other a little bit. So I know <laughs> I'm better than him. So please don't hesitate to ask me if you need anything. OK, um, and we will be more than happy to help out. I want to thank you all for your attention tonight. This yeah. webinar has been recorded. Does this program qualify for OSAP? Yes, it does. Absolutely yes. does. Great question. For OSAP for Alberta student loans, for BC student loans, mm -hmm. uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, New Brunswick, um, across the country. Yes, absolutely. And we will help you with your student loan application as well. So please don't hesitate to ask us for that help. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. No, thank you guys. Lastly, I want to just say like, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Um, always remember your words become your world. So a lot of you today have proven that with what you're saying so far and the questions that you're asking and the interest. We are here to assist. Just know that we are here to put your dream into motion. And I look forward to speaking to all of you at some point and then walking down on Zoom, because I don't know if we'll be able to see each other because of this whole pandemic, um, when you graduate and celebrating with you guys then. Awesome. As a campus director, I invite you to ask us anything that you want. I'm happy to hear from you. And I would love to have you start as a student with us on October 25th. Take lots of care, everybody. Be safe wherever you are tonight. And we will see you all very soon. Bye-bye. Take, take care, Thank everybody. You. Bye. You're welcome. Oh, there's some voices. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. 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 All right, take care, everybody. How do I get out of this? Good job, Andre. <laughs> Thank you. And Bonnie. Thank you. I didn't do much. Robin, are you able to find your end button? I'm looking for it. <laughs> Bottom right hand corner. I have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. It's just you and me. <laughs> Bonnie, you're 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 dope, man. Like, can I use that? <laughs> you're dope, man. Like your your experience, you don't even though you have the experience, you don't show it off, and you're natural. You were so weird about oh, this this was just perfect enough of information to get that ball rolling. I think each and every one of them are going to contact this. If all of them don't enroll for the first class, that second class will have all of these people. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think it went really, really well. And, I, uh, I think we it, worked so. well. Um, I think we pretty fed awesome up each other's team. Yeah, yeah. The, the balance of uh, jumping back and forth was smooth. The transition was smooth. Um, if I forgot to mention something, you jumped in. If, you know, I felt like you needed to add something, we had, and we just played off each other. And they got that synergy. Um, and of course, speaking, um, you know, when you first meet and all that kind of jazz can be, but they started to open up mm -hmm. really, more really more well. questions were coming. Yeah, no, it was great. I'm super yeah. excited. Yeah, super you're going to get some emails. I'll get some emails. I'll